tailgate party in the parking lot before the day. <laughs> Already loaded. All right, before we start, I want you to get a tape and put it in your VCR. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Not you, idiot. Stay where you are. <laughs> Talking to the home audience. Tonight's topic is practical jokes. And to begin, we should tell you that the fox dipped his penis in each of your beers. Very true. Cool. A, a bizarre reaction yeah, to that statement. <laughs> no, not worry, we're all God's children. The practical joke is, though, a purely male phenomenon. Women don't play them. They just don't. Even lesbians don't play them. And they play golf, so you think they'd have a sense of humor. <laughs> not a day goes by that I don't try to humiliate a close friend. We pulled a good one on Adam, as a matter of fact. Uh, one of the best ones ever. You mind if I tell it? Yeah, actually, I do. All right, have a Adam got that. invited to the Grammys by one of the Dixie chicks. You know this uh, all-girl country man? It's not a big deal. I only did two of them in their manager. Please. <laughs> the year before, I went with Merle Haggard, so this is quite a step up. I, I'm not even going to get into how Adam explained this date to his girlfriend. That was genius. But they went to the Grammys, nice evening, purely platonic, and uh, what's her name? Natalie, Natalie, the lead singer. The next day, Natalie, who invited him, um, sends Adam a dozen roses at the office and a note that says, when can I see you again? And Adam is very full of himself. How about that, fellas? The ladies can't get enough of me here. <laughs> but I do not sound like that. The only the thing is, <laughs> the flowers didn't really come from Natalie. They, they came from me. Please, let me get through this. Adam's so impressed with how irresistible he is, that doesn't even cross his mind. And the next day, he gets another gift, a giant heart-shaped cookie, and another note. And this one says, seriously, when can I see you again? <laughs> and, all right, I, and I, I got her cell phone number. Actually, her number was on the card, and I called her mm -hmm. about 11 o'clock at night. And she picked up the phone and said, oh, my God, Adam, I'm watching you right now on TV. And I thought, I got a stalker on my hands now. <laughs> this is dangerous. So right. I told her I had a girlfriend, but it was very nice to meet her. Confusedly, she hung up the phone. Yes. And the next day's gift came. With a six foot, it was a six-foot sub. And it had the words, I will not be ignored, written on it. In mustard. <laughs> and I, I thought she had a sense of humor. She was just being nice yeah. about the sense whole thing. Humor. Now he's starting to get nervous. Like, maybe she really is stalking him or something. Which I am eating up. So I keep going. The final gift comes the next day. It's a used pair of panties with another note, a little bit stronger. This one says, I want to F you so bad. <laughs> Don't, get, listen, fellas. Don't get too excited. It was from me. <laughs> now Adam doesn't know what to do. He's got a girlfriend. This is getting out of hand. He's so already finally, pissed off about me going in first I place. step in. I put my foot down. I tell him, you got to call her and put a stop to this. This chick is nuts. You don't know what she might do. Yeah, she's a, she's a sex time bomb. She's yeah. liable to explode any moment. So he gets the phone number and he tells us, uh, I'm going to let the kid off easy. Heartbreaker. Yeah. And he calls her up, uh, makes a little small talk. Hey, how you doing? And then drops the bomb. 
Um, listen, thanks for the flowers and the cookie and uh, the sub and uh, the panties. I'm real flattered, but I have a girlfriend, and if she finds out... <laughs> And, and uh, I, I knew I was uh, in trouble, by the way, when she said, what panties? And I gave her, at first I gave her, listen, we're both adults. Let's not play. <laughs> Let's not pretend. We don't know what's going on here. Yeah. But, but as I was saying that to her, I started to look up from my desk and notice the entire office was filled with the writers and Cackling Jimmy like and everyone emails. else. And everyone was laughing like uh, mental patients. And without missing a beat, Adam switches right into, so how's that new album coming along? <laughs> it shaved years off my life. All right. Uh, meanwhile, I got a six-foot sub out of the deal, so yeah! who's the joke on? It's not funny, and you'll be hearing from my attorneys very soon. Here's what we got to do. We got to get those uh, VCRs ready for the folks at home, and here's how it works. Uh, tomorrow, you got to go out and buy a lottery ticket and pick the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This, this audience may have trouble remembering that, but that would be 1, one through, through six. 6. Right. But first, you got to start recording. Start right now. Right. And be quiet, everyone. Hello, Lucky Lotto players. I'm Roger Rose, and as you know, when I'm standing here next to the lotto machine, it's lotto time. The rules are the same. Match your six, and you'll win a share of the lotto jackpot of $14 million. Good luck to you, and here we go. And the first number out there is six. That's followed by three. The third number is five. The fourth number is one. Next, we have four. And for the $14 million jackpot, the final number is two. Ladies and gentlemen, there they are. Someone out there may be a millionaire. See you next time. Then you gather whoever's in the house, wife, girlfriend, roommate, whoever. You show them the ticket and roll that tape as if it was live. <laughs> All right. First, they'll make fun of you for picking such stupid numbers. Then when you win... Win. Give them all the finger, start packing, and leave for Aruba. All right. <laughs> then once in Aruba, marry, start a new family, and repeat the joke all over That's again. That's right. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back with a huge rubber penis, so stay there. It's the man show. Here's one. This guy wins the lotto. Which guy? Would you please? Go ahead. Go ahead. Guy wins the lotto. Calls his wife, says, I won the lotto. 60 million. Pack your things. Wife says, what do I pack? Winter clothes? Summer clothes? Guy says, I don't care. Just be out of the house by the time I get home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brittany Andrews. And you might recognize me from such films as The Lingerie Kickboxer and The Fanny. Now here's a practical joke household hint. People expect to get wet, of course, when they're bent over a sink, but not when they're flushing a toilet. So here's where you come in. First, take the toilet tank lid off. Then, disconnect the hose that refills the tank and pull it so it rests on the rim of the tank. Then put the lid back on so it's slightly ajar. But the tube is still sticking out. The next person that goes to drop the kids off at the pool will be getting a splash. Like us, you've got genitalia. Male genitalia, of course, you've seen it in the books, but because we men don't like to look each other in the private parts, we're not really sure how we stack up size-wise. And, and you can never get a straight answer from a woman. They tell you it's too big, or maybe they're just uh, trying to flatter you. If they tell you it's too small, maybe they've seen too many. Maybe they're just a bitch. <laughs> but the real question is, 
do they really care? All the magazines say they don't care, but I hit the street to find out for myself, does size really matter? Yeah! Sex-wise, does size matter? Uh, yeah, I think it matters. I think um, a lot of it's visual. What do you mean? Because if, if the man is... <laughs> does it particularly matter? It doesn't make a difference. No? Uh, uh -huh. Big guy. Yeah. And... His unit is relatively small. Right, right, right. Then it sort of gives you this inadequacy. Right, thing. right, right. <laughs> does uh, does size matter to you? Yeah. It does. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, where are you running then? Yeah. <laughs> Hugely. Nice to meet you. <laughs> size does size matter. Size is very important. It is very, very important. important. Yeah. Viagra. Is that Viagra? You know, why can't you look at my eyes? <laughs> because I could It's possibly. so insulting. <laughs> yeah, I like to make a collect call to my mother. What do you think of this right here? <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> Protest. Silicone. <laughs> Where are you going? Please, you're gonna, away. you're gonna have to put a token in before you get through the gate. size matter. I'm not answering that question. No? No. Not answering. Bad news for you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Size matters and I'm big, okay? I'm talking about, here, you can hold on to this if you need, if, so you don't fall down. No. <laughs> what kind of car do you have? I've got a 41 Ford Woody. You got a, you got a 41 Ford Woody? Right. It's funny, I got a 67 Woody going right here. Big dick and you're not use it. You ain't gonna go. go if you got a little dick, but it come back up. I got a snake too, you know. Mine spits. <laughs> Mine spits sometimes too. Yeah. Well, thank you. Nice talking to you. Move along, will you? <laughs> Unfortunately, according to the most of the women I talk to, size does matter a lot. Oh, that sucks. Women are so superficial. Juggies, show us the goods. Montel Williams show. See? <laughs> now there you go. This isn't the Montel Williams show at all. That was a joke. Not a particularly good one, but that is precisely why we're here today. All right. When it comes to practical jokes, things have gotten pretty stale lately. It seems like there hasn't been anything new since the old uh, whoopee cushion, which was about 200 years old. But why? Why has progress in prank making stopped? Is the joy buzzer so perfect we could stop and rest on that laurel? Hardly. The joy buzzer sucks. That is why the Man Show scientists have been working very hard to bring you new and exciting breakthroughs in the field of practical jokes. These are the very latest gag ovations. And nowadays, people spend a lot of time in the air. There are more than a dozen airplanes in America alone. And for the most part, they take off and land safely. But what happens when they don't? You're on a plane and it's going to crash and everyone's going to die. Die laughing, that is, with this. The goofy black box. Imagine the looks on the search and rescue team's faces when they find this black box and hear cockpit recordings like this. Roger that. Now, do you lick the salt and then suck the lime? Or the other way around? I think you suck the lime. Ah, oh, just do the shot and pass the damn bottle. Or... 
do not, do not applaud that. <laughs> or this. Oh, oh, oh Captain, oh. I am upright and in the locked position. Oh. Ready for takeoff! Oh. Oh. Or set the black box for extra black. Somebody say plane! plane. Somebody say crash! crash. Somebody say plane crash! Plane crash! Plane crash! Plane crash! Plane crash in the motherfucking high Ah, uh, that is so dope. Word up. Now, like most guys who've earned the right to call themselves men, I like nachos. I like nachos dripping with cheese. And even better than nachos dripping with cheese is your friend dripping with cheese. And thanks to this new twist on a timeless classic, we've invented the cheese squirting carnation. You want to smell my flower, Jimmy? I'd love to, Adam. Well, I'll just say cheese. Oh! <laughs> I, I, I told you you shouldn't have done it before the show. All right. I'm going to kill those prop gonna, assholes. That is good. I swear to God, I'm going to throw my shoulder out of socket. <laughs> and that is going to do wonders for the gay rumors. All right. What else? Oh, the doctor. The doctor is in the house. There's nothing worse than a visit to the proctologist. <laughs> Dr. Drew is not a not technically a proctologist, but it's a hobby of his. <laughs> and believe me, proctology is no fun at all. No, it is no picnic when your fingers do the walking through anusberg. But that's why we uh, want to break the tension and bust the HMO with this next uh, gag. This is the giant rectal thermometer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't worry, I threw javelin in college. <laughs> <laughs> right, that'll put a look of shock on any patient's face. That is comedy, but why let the doc have the last laugh? Remember, remember those cans of peanut brittle had the snakes fire out of them? Oh, yeah. Well, it'd be twice as funny if they fired out of your butt. <laughs> it's the butt full of snakes. Also works great in bathhouses and prisons. Oh, the rectum is such fertile comedy ground. And our final gagavation makes even the most ordinary party into a party. Why settle for the measly old fly in the ice Lady cube when you can really sicken many more party goers at once with the midget in a keg? Check the hint of garlic. Yeah. He must be Italian. And those are gagavations, everybody. This is the man show. Joe for doing a wonderful job and risking his own life. And I want to thank the ass bobber, Dr. Drew, everybody. A long time stepping to the fraternity party. 
Before we go, Fox, is Ziggy Shaggy to take us out of here? Ziggy Shaggy, Ziggy Shaggy, hi, hi, hi! Ziggy Shaggy, Ziggy Shaggy, hi, hi, hi! Ziggy Shaggy, Ziggy Shaggy, hi, hi, hi! Stone Stanley Productions in association with 